sitting on my doorstep The people's passing by They're coming back from getting wrecked Everybody's high Saturday night, what a bitch Laying on the lawn The morning comes to bring the switch After the buzz is gone Hello and welcome to another episode of Addictions the podcast about addictions. I'm your host, David Wagner. Today on the show, we are taking a deep dive into probably the most widely used psychoactive addictive drug on the planet, caffeine. But before we get to that, I just want to remind everyone that you can go back and listen to any of the previous episodes of the show at www.addictionspodcast.com. There you can find all sorts of other stuff too, including links on how to get help with addiction and how to help support the Addictions Podcast through donations. Okay, so caffeine. On this episode, we are going to listen to a conversation that I had with a fellow podcasting friend of mine who actually overdosed on caffeine at one point. But before we get to that, let's first talk about caffeine in general for a moment. First of all, how does caffeine work? And without getting too sciencey about things, caffeine basically works by tricking the brain into thinking that you're not tired, and it does this by mimicking a naturally occurring molecule in the brain called adenosine. Adenosine actually binds to or attaches to receptor cells that are in your brain, and this causes you to actually feel sleepy. But when those receptors are covered by caffeine, the adenosine molecules are unable to do their job and cause you to feel tired. So basically, this is how caffeine gives your body and mind that signature stimulated feeling. For most people, the effects of caffeine occur within 30 minutes of use, and caffeine generally has a half-life of only around 6 hours. This means that after about 6 hours, you're only feeling half of the effects of the caffeine. This is why people need to keep using caffeine throughout the day or the night to continue feeling that stimulating effect. The next question that you may have is, is caffeine addictive? Well, there are basically two schools of thought here. There are those who think that caffeine is 100% addictive, and then there are those who don't think that caffeine is addictive. Now, as an everyday, all-day coffee drinker for well over 15 years, I can honestly say that, in my opinion, caffeine is incredibly addictive, both psychologically and physically. I've actually noticed on many days, when I go the majority of the day without my usual intake of coffee, that on those days I end up feeling very irritable, and I often find myself suffering from some pretty insane headaches. And I've also spoke with numerous regular coffee and soda drinkers who report the same exact thing. Now, getting technical here, according to the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, also known as the DSM-5, Caffeine withdrawal is actually now included as a mental disorder. So I would definitely say that caffeine is in fact addictive. I don't care what WebMD or Libstrong.com might tell you, caffeine is addictive. Period. Some of the withdrawal symptoms from caffeine, which typically occur around 24 to 36 hours after your last caffeine dose, include things like anxiety, headache, fatigue, depressed mood, and of course, irritability. I'll be the first one to admit, I love caffeine. Coffee is my main squeeze, it is my go-to thing, and when I can't have it, it doesn't take long for me to start feeling those symptoms of withdrawal from it. But I am certain that I've never overdosed on caffeine. Overdose on caffeine is rare, but it can happen, and with the rise of super-caffeinated energy drinks and pills, caffeine overdose is actually on the rise. Doctors and scientists recommend no more than roughly 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. Some of the symptoms of caffeine overdose include increased heart rate, nausea, sweating, dizziness, heart palpitations, fainting, and even cardiac arrest. These are some serious health issues. One last thing before I bring on our guest, Jace Schweiger. In my interview with him, I stated that I thought that a cup of coffee had around 30 milligrams of caffeine in it. But actually, caffeine content can vary in coffee, and it's, it, it really depends on what type of coffee you're having. A typical 8-ounce cup of coffee contains roughly anywhere from 75 to 165 milligrams of caffeine, 
depending on whether it's drip brewed or if it's instant coffee. Now, other caffeinated beverages like tea have roughly 15 to 75 milligrams of caffeine, while energy drinks and sodas can have anywhere from 40 to 175 milligrams of caffeine. Enough of my yakking, though. Let's talk to my guest who has actually overdosed on caffeine. But stay tuned after the interview. We will be talking about alternatives to caffeine and if they are any safer or even effective. And we will also touch on some strategies for lowering your caffeine intake. All right, today on the show we are talking with a good friend of mine, Jace Schweiger, and today we're talking about caffeine. It's one of the most widely used substances on the entire planet. Here in America, it's estimated that 75%, three out of four people who consume caffeine on a daily basis are actually addicted to caffeine. Myself, I'm a huge coffee drinker. I've got to have it morning, noon, and night. I mean, it's it's probably not good to drink that much coffee, uh, but it's so widely accepted by society that a lot of people don't give it a second thought. But Jace, you actually had some some very real issues with caffeine in the past. Yes, I did. Um, this actually all started when I was incarcerated uh, in Rikers Island for 37 days. Uh, I had gone 37 days cold turkey, no caffeine at all. And after about 37, 35 days, I developed um, kidney stones. Wow, man, that's 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 unreal. The weird thing is, like, kidney stones typically, a lot of people say, and even doctors say, that kidney stones typically can be caused by, like, drinking too much soda or pop or even beer. But you actually developed the kidney stones when you stopped using the caffeine. And that's that's what really surprised me. I had expected some some problems. I had expected some withdrawal from caffeine and not having it right about you know the the first entry point of rikers island um you know, being there for about a week maybe two weeks i would go through it maybe get a little bit of the shakes or whatever or be kind of crabby and upset and irritable didn't expect it uh, as i was leaving yeah that's that's pretty wild so what would you say your average intake of caffeine was before you know going being incarcerated uh, i could put down a two liter in about an hour so are, like, we're talking Mountain Dew, Coca-Cola? Or... Yes, Mountain Dew. Uh, mostly Mountain Dew. Yeah. Primarily Mountain Dew. And I say that almost in a laughing matter because, ironically enough, I do currently have one here with me. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've got a big, giant 24-ounce cup of coffee sitting on my desk here as we speak. Right. And part of my problem is I I, I almost feel I, it's socially acceptable. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. 70 80% of the world uses caffeine. And it's almost in a sense of you can use it and you won't be judged. And not only that, but they have caffeine in multiple forms. I used to work several jobs. I had multiple jobs at one time, uh, two jobs back to back. I would leave one job. 30 minutes later, I'd have to be the next one. And part of my concern was I was getting tired. And I wasn't allowed to have caffeine with me where I work. So they have caffeine pills and caffeine yeah. patches. And you don't get judged for using them. I was like, oh, if you have caffeine or you need caffeine, you're a hard worker. And that's I think that's the stigma that I stuck with and, and the stigma that I'm like, oh, you know what? Yeah, people think that if you have caffeine or if you need caffeine, you're working hard. And, of course, everybody wants to be relatable to working hard. Yeah, of course. It's always been that, that vice for me. Yeah. I just seen the other day I was at, I think, Walmart or something. And, um, yeah, no, Walmart's not paying me to say that. But I was at the store and uh, they have caffeine gum. You know, you just chew the gum and you each stick is like the equivalent to... A cup of coffee, which, oh, I'm not sure. A cup of coffee has like 30 or 40 milligrams of caffeine in it, depending on the coffee. It's just crazy. It, it's in all forms. And one thing that actually does kind of bother me about it, you know, and it never used to because I really didn't think about it, but we we give children caffeine. Right. And, you know, if if you handed your, your 12-year-old kid a joint, you know, <laughs> or a beer or something, you know, you'd definitely be... That'd be socially unacceptable, definitely. Of course, yeah. But, you know, nobody even bats an eye. Here, here kid, have a Coca-Cola or, or whatever. Or here, have a sip of my Mountain Dew. Yeah, ex exactly. My daughter, uh, her grandmother took her over there, and we were having breakfast, and her grandmother gives her a, a cup of coffee. And I'm like, no, no, no. She doesn't need coffee. You know, she can have orange juice. You know, I, 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 I let my kid drink soda, but it's very, I try to moderate it, definitely, you know, because it's, aside from the caffeine, 
it's just not good for your teeth. It's not, you know, it's not good for corn syrup is not good at all for, for our health, really. But it's just so socially acceptable. And it kind of blows me away when I really think about it and look at some of the statistics, you know, I mean, it's hard to say what later, later in life, what all this caffeine is going to do to you. You know, there's a lot of different complications that can arise from caffeine. Just like you said, you know, with your issue, I noticed that if I go, you know, eight hours without having a cup of coffee, I'll start to get like a headache. As soon as I get some caffeine, the headache is gone. You know, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, do you, do you, if you, if you go a portion of the day, do you find that you're feeling slight withdrawal from from the caffeine i find myself feeling a lot more than just a slight withdrawal from the caffeine i find myself i become very irritable very quickly uh, and i think that's part of the reason why i do consume so much mountain dew um another uh, another issue that i do have is is of course um i'm a smoker I, i smoke cigarettes constantly so i have two vices nicotine and caffeine and of course you're going to be judged if you smoke around your kids you're not going to be judged if you're consuming mountain dew around your kids so and and look we have children we can say with with general accuracy children do stupid things yeah and if i have a can of mountain dew or a bottle of mountain dew i seem to go okay well i have this i can calm down for just a second kind of rethink my strategy on how to deal with your stupid behavior and try to address it from there but until then you know i i can't walk around just puffing on a cigarette in walmart when my kids are trying to take fruit loops off the shelf yeah exactly exactly it's kind of odd the smoking thing that has that whole thing has changed drastically you know when i when i was a kid five six seven years old you know, back in the the late 80s, you know, it was nothing to smoke in the car with your kids. My, both of my parents did it. You know, it wasn't, I seen my other friends, their parents would smoke in the car with the kids. And, you know, it, it's pretty wild how, how big of a step they've taken as far as nicotine goes. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, in the future, if we'll ever see that same kind of change with, with in regard to caffeine. Right. But I honestly, I, I don't see it happening. I mean, it's in a lot of places, it's really ingrained, at least the coffee business is kind of ingrained in the culture of the country. I mean, definitely here in the U.S., but in places where they actually grow and harvest coffee, like like Brazil and uh, some South American countries, Colombia, it is it is a way of life. Yeah, it's it's something that's kind of infiltrated every facet of society and culture worldwide and i don't i don't think it's going anywhere anywhere anytime soon i i would agree with that i mean even people have smoke breaks you know coffee breaks things like that it doesn't mean you can't have a mountain dew break yeah or soda break or just a break and i think even if you're not a nicotine addicted person it's the social factor and I think that's what I often have a, a problem with is I like to be social. And I find that a lot of people that I am social with drink Mountain Dew or have a cigarette. And it's nice to just sit down and smoke with them or sit down and have a drink with them and, and chit chat and, and shop talk and whatever. Or, you know, talk podcast. And, and But you have a soda in your hand. It's your vice. It's, it's your thing. And part of my problem is that I've consumed so much Mountain Dew recently that it has it's become a running joke on our show. Hey, you know what? Why don't you just go get a sponsor? Go get a sponsor. Go get a, go get a sponsor. And I almost say it as a joke, but then I realize that I'm being enabled to just torture myself, to slowly kill myself with Mountain Dew because my wife got me a refrigerator, a small six pack container refrigerator for Christmas. Yeah, you keep that right there with you. That's yeah. that's crazy. Now you you actually do host a podcast or co-host a podcast yourself, Jace, don't you? Yes, I do. It's a, it's a morning show, and that's why you know some people might have their their cups of coffee with them. I'm not a coffee guy, but I'm a Mountain Dew guy, and I always have two or three with me. It's only a three hour show, and I'm only on for two hours because I have to put my kids on the bus. And in two hours, I've consumed two Mountain Dews. Then I go downstairs and I do some housework, and I'm walking around with one. Or if I'm sitting in my bedroom streaming video games and playing video games, I have the refrigerator right there. And then when the kids get home, I go downstairs and I have the refrigerator that has a 24-pack down there. Yeah, so it's, you're surrounded by it. Yeah, the thing, I, I currently live with my mom. You know, she's uh, she's elderly now and she's on oxygen, so I'm, I'm kind of here to help out with her. And she's a, a huge coffee drinker, and I can 
definitely say that she has influenced my coffee intake. I mean, I, I never used to even like coffee. You know, she said, why don't you try a cup of coffee? This was, I don't, I don't know, I was 17 or 18, you know, but I had, a, I had a cup of coffee and it was, you know, that it's kind of a developed taste, I guess. But, but once you get past that point and you're and you actually enjoy it you know it's I drink it in the morning I drink it in the evening right before I go to bed I can drink it you know and, and I don't have trouble sleeping that's that's this that's the thing I do a lot of people will will yeah will have issues going to sleep because they they've had so much caffeine well, I I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that my my Mountain Dew or my caffeine intake is the reason why I don't sleep it's just I would like to say it's just because I'm so rambunctious and I have such a, a busy mind and you know, I got to plan this and do that and, and get this person scheduled and, and try to do this and that, that I just don't sleep well. And even if I'm so totally exhausted, like last night, I was very, very tired. I hadn't had any Mountain Dew and I still flip flopped in the bed for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, you know, everybody's individual biology is different in the way we metabolize things. And I just feel like for myself, I'm not as sensitive to caffeine as a lot of people are. And I may have been, you know, very sensitive when I first started using caffeine on a regular basis, but I do believe like other substances that you can kind of develop a tolerance to caffeine. I would I would completely agree with that. Just like I'm sure you can build a tolerance to Tylenol, pain medication or any kind of medication. That's why uh and and I don't know how true my statement here is going to be, but that's why we have a lot of problems with the opiate crisis is because you've taken x amount of milligrams for so long, it doesn't help. You know, it doesn't it doesn't do the job that it was intended to do. You know, uh, you, you take whatever and then they have to keep increasing and increasing and increasing. And by the time you get so high up there and so far up that you can't really change that. You can't really fix that anymore. Exactly. And I, I can speak from experience there, Jace. For seven years, I was addicted to opioid painkillers. Hydrocodone was the my drug of choice, which I was prescribed, you know, legitimately for four and a half years. Uh, but after my prescription was taken away, and, and during that, you know, my doctor would start me on the lowest dose and then up to the quantity and then up the took, you know, raised up the milligram dose and then up to the quantity again, then raised up the milligram dose till I was at 10 milligrams of hydrocodone, you know, four to five times a day. But by the end of my addiction, I was taking anywhere from 90 to 130 milligrams of hydrocodone every single day, which that's, these are 10 milligram pills. That's eight to 13 pills every single day. Uh, again, some people would judge and say, how could you pop those pills? How could you take this? How could you do that? Where you don't get that same reaction with Mountain Dew. It's almost embraced. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to soda. Yep, just here, take another one. You know, and it's it's readily available. It's easy to get. You know, you just walk into the store and buy a 24-pack or a 12-pack or whatever. There it is. Well, and, and that's I think that's part of the problem that I have is that I, I've grown to see that. You know, first off, I have to say it started off as a rebellious thing. My mother would never let me have it growing up. And when I turned 18, I said, hey, guess what? I'm going to have it. I'm going to pay for it. I bought it on my own. And there's nothing that you can do to stop me. And since it became so rebellious and I kind of enjoyed rebelling against my mother and not only just rebelling against my mother, but I bought something on my own. I kind of took pride in it. You know, hey, I bought this. I'm going to enjoy it. It's mine. You can't take it away. I'm not hurting anyone. It it became it became an independence thing. Yeah. Now, like, you've heard of all the different energy drinks out there, like the Red Bull and Monster and all that stuff. Are you are you a big fan of that kind of caffeine delivery system? Sometimes. It depends on if I'm really in the mood or if I'm really, if I know that I'm not going to stop for a while and I know the can of Monster is just a little bit bigger than the 20-ounce bottle of Mountain Dew and I have the means to transport it around with me. So, like, on my motorcycle, I don't have a cup holder. Yeah, yeah. Where, uh, I mean, I don't anymore. I used to. I just got a new motorcycle and... Uh, I found a way to transport a Mountain Dew with me. I can just cram it between the seats when my wife's not back there and take it with me. And then at a stoplight, I can just reach back behind me and have my drink with me. Can't do that with a can. Yeah. Now, from what I've read, I've done a little bit of reading about caffeine, and you actually can overdose from caffeine. I believe it takes, uh, you know, literally like a shitload of milligrams of caffeine to do it. But see, some of the symptoms of overdose can be like panic attacks or uh, even hallucinations or like delusions, the lowering of your inhibitions. 
Do you feel like you've ever overdosed on caffeine? Uh, in fact, I have. Uh, in fact, I I really have. Um, I work on an ice cream truck every summer. Yeah. And instead of being on a commission base, I was salary based. So I went in at eight o'clock in the morning. The trucks didn't go out till eleven, and my responsibility was stocking the trucks with what they needed. You know, uh, sodas, ice cream, candy, whatever the things that we sell. Mm -hmm. on the ice cream truck. So I went at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm stocking all the trucks. We have 13 trucks and at every truck they have a refrigerator full of Mountain Dew. So I would grab one, fill up the truck with whatever it needed, crush the can when I was done, throw it in the garbage, move on to the next truck. I probably had 13 as I'm stocking the trucks going back and forth. And I know that they were always cold and they were always enjoyable. I worked that entire day and only drank Mountain Dew. That's Again, that's my vice. That's the only thing I did. By the time I got back to the shop at about nine o'clock at night, once it was dark uh, and all the ice cream was sold or whatever, I parked the truck and I blacked out and passed out on the floor of the truck. Wow. Thank God the truck was parked and thank God other people were there. They had to literally take my, my limp body out of the window, the little serving window on the ice cream truck. And I had had a hyper, uh, hyper heart rate. I had apparently developed some kind of hole in my stomach uh, with too much acid. Yeah. I had to go to the hospital. I was rushed to the hospital. I was actually in pain. And with that, uh, my wife had to leave work, come to the hospital to come get me because she wasn't quite sure. All she knows she got a call from my coworker who got into my phone and called my wife and explained, look, Jason's in the hospital and you're going to need to go meet him there. She met me. She's crying. Of course, she's scared. Come to find out I did this to myself and I literally overdosed on Mountain Dew. They had to semi sedate me to get my heart rate to drop. Wow, that's amazing. I wasn't completely sedated, but they had to give me some sedatives to calm my heart down because it just would not, it wouldn't come down naturally. I'd been in the hospital probably five, six hours without any Mountain Dew, without any other food or drink or whatever. And my heart rate had maintained some, some crazy number. And I, like I said, I wound up in the hospital. And the first thing that the doctor says is no Mountain Dew. You have to cut back on your acids. You've, you've developed a, a hole. You're evaporating the lining of your stomach. You're making yourself sick and you're going to kill yourself if you don't stop. And unfortunately, the first thing I did was I, I went home right to comfort and I grabbed a soda and had a slice of pizza. Yeah. And it wasn't to be rebellious anymore. It was, I have to have this because if I don't, I'm going to freak. I was just in a hospital. I couldn't have a cigarette, which you do when you're stressed out. I couldn't have a Mountain Dew because they told me not to and they wouldn't give me one there. I need something that I'm comfortable with. I need comfort. Other than a hug, other than a cigarette, other than just being home and laying on your couch, which you, which you would find relaxing, I needed my Mountain Dew. It's cold. It's almost a contoured bottle. Your hand fits perfectly around it. Yeah, yeah. And I hate to say it like that. It's so stupid. But that's how I view it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Is that if I can wrap my hand around it and, you know, it, it, it's it got perfect spots for your fingers down at the bottom of the bottle. I know people are sitting there right now looking at their Mountain Dew bottle going, holy crap, he's right. No, but I'm serious. <laughs> my hand goes around it perfectly. You know, I hold it perfectly. I feel how cold it is on my hand. It makes me feel good. And I sat there and I had a, a slice of pizza with a Mountain Dew because I needed it. And then I realized that's when I realized I had a problem. But I don't really know how to fix it because, again, a lot of the times I don't feel like what I'm doing is hurting anybody. It hurts me. It hurts me. And that's the problem. Yeah. And, you know, it's like with a lot of the, the pharmaceutical drugs, you know, it's you can you can do it on your own. I mean, it's better if you can do it with a doctor, but you can, you know, wean yourself down slowly over time. Now, have you ever tried like switching to like caffeine free Mountain Dew or do they even make caffeine free Mountain Dew? Um, I don't know if they make caffeine free. I know they make diet and I'm probably eliminates a lot of the, you know, different things in it. Yeah. And I, you know, I've, I've read about coffee, like even caffeine free coffee, decaf, there's still a little bit of caffeine in there. You know, it's, they can't remove all of it. It's not a, there's not a exact scientific process to do it. I guess, you know, my, my suggestion, man, would be if, if you do want to lower your intake, don't definitely don't just stop cold turkey because with, with just about any substance, that's a really bad idea. I mean, it, it works for some people, don't get me wrong, but uh, it can be in the case of like benzodiazepines, like Xanax and that type of shit. If you stop cold turkey, you you can die. Uh, you yeah, can have seizures and and die. But you know, just keep one of the twenty ounce bottles and just fill it up halfway. Kind of lower your portion, I guess. That way would be my 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 advice. I mean, that's definitely a suggestion. That's definitely something I could probably try. Yeah, but like you said, it's 
it's not going to be easy, obviously, but if it's something you want to do, then, you know, for by all means, definitely do it. It's kind of a tricky subject to talk about because it is so, so socially acceptable. It's, I would say, like, probably, I'm just pulling numbers out of the sky here, but 75 to 80 percent of the world would probably not look as at caffeine addiction as, like, a, the same way they look at heroin addiction, for instance, you know. So it's it's not easy to kind of figure these things out. Right. And I think because it is so socially acceptable, just like you said, and, and not only being socially acceptable, but the fact that it's so readily available, you know, other what they would consider drugs, because caffeine is, in fact, a drug. Other drugs uh, have to be provided by a doctor. Yeah. Where this one can go in and be provided by a dollar. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel the same same way about al- alcohol. You know, it's. It's kind of odd that most drugs need to be administered by a doctor, but these ones are okay. Anybody can sell them. And yeah, and that's that's why it's becoming so I and, and like I said, I think this is why my intake has has actually increased and and become more of a problem, but at least this time so far, I've only wound up in the hospital once with what I would consider an, uh, an honest overdose. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, that's just in that that's a scary situation. Like you said, thank God the van was in park. Who knows if it would have happened while you were actually uh, driving down the road. I could have killed somebody. Yeah, it's it can be a scary situation. That's for sure, man. You know, and I, I, I'm going to kind of finish up here by asking you, and I, I try to ask all my guests this question, Jace. You know, if, if there's anybody out there who's struggling with the same kinds of addictions that you're dealing with, you know, be it smoking or... Uh, caffeine or, or really any addiction, I, what what advice would you want to tell somebody who, you know, they're at the end of the rope and they, they need help? Um, you know what? I, I would say this. Uh, first off, you can't do it on your own. And even if you can't do it on your own, at least recognize the fact of uh, you can try. Uh, and if you do try, moderation. Uh, not that I want to openly condone uh, drug use and, and trying to wean yourself down. But build yourself a support system. I mean, granted, did my wife buy me a refrigerator so I can put Mountain Dew in it? Yes. But that also enables her to say, look, I bought you a six-pack this week. I'm not buying you one until that one is completely finished. I'm not going to have two or three uh, six-packs available for you to just fill up your fridge willy-nilly. You know, I'm going to help control this with you. And that's exactly what I need. You know, uh, I want to be able to say, hey, I need help. I need to bring down my intake of Mountain Dew and I'm going to need your help to do it. Just don't, you know, don't let me hurt myself or others by, by doing this. And, you know, if that means that you're only going to buy me one case of Mountain Dew a week, good. It's much better than having a 24 pack in the refrigerator downstairs and a six pack upstairs when I can just take them from downstairs, bring them upstairs. And now you're forced to buy some for downstairs because we don't have any more left. So build yourself a, an appropriate support system and, and, Take everything in moderation, and I hate it when people used to say that to me, but at least I know I need help. I need to fix it, and I know that uh, the only way for it to go away or get better is through my own efforts. And if you need help, you know, let us know, and we'll be happy to help you. Awesome, man. Fantastic. Words to live by, definitely. Well, again, man, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show, Jace. It was great. I think the listeners are really going to enjoy this one. One more time, what's the name of your show? So that uh, if anybody wants to check it out, they can. Cop and Crew Morning Show. Cop and Crew No Holds Bar Morning Show. It's actually um, it's recorded live, broadcast live on WLINY as well as copandcrew.com. We are now on a few UK radio stations uh, as well as several um, domestic radio stations that have been playing our show. And we would love to have you because we actually talk about things like this all the time. You know, we talk about, hey, you know, you got to put down the Mountain Dew, dude. Or we actually talk about some of the the crises that are going on in our country and maybe what we can do uh, as just people. You know, you, you can't do it all by yourself. And sometimes there's just people, if you just want to listen or just want to chat with somebody, we're there. And we do our show from 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'd love to have you join us. So come come join us, W-L-I-N-Y, or uh, Cop and Crew No Holds Bar Morning Show uh, on Facebook. And we are all over the place, and we hope to see you there. So thank you, and thank you for having me on your show. Hey, of course, man. Anytime. I really appreciate it, man. 
Thanks again for coming on the show, Jace, and we'll talk to you later, man. Thank you, David. Again, I want to thank Jace for coming on the show and sharing his experiences with caffeine with us. For me, it really kind of puts things into perspective a little bit. I mean, imagine if you went way over the typical dose of caffeine and ended up passing out while you were driving in the freeway or something. That would just be disastrous. And I'm not going around waving a flag here that no one should ever drink coffee or use caffeine. I only wanted to highlight some of the lesser known effects of it. I mean, hell, I like I said, I drink coffee probably way more frequently than anyone really should. I just thought it would be an interesting topic to cover. One thing that I do want to say, though, before we talk about alternatives to caffeine is this. If you go to any AA or NA meetings, nine times out of ten there is free coffee offered. And to me, knowing what I know about the addictive properties of caffeine, it just seems really counterintuitive to the entire abstinence motto of those types of programs. But I'm not here to judge. Those are great programs, and compared to many other drugs, caffeine is small potatoes. But nevertheless, it is a psychoactive drug, and it does hold the potential for addiction. Now, as per alternatives to caffeine, there really isn't much out there with lower chances of addiction while still giving you the same effects of caffeine. Your best bet is to simply lower your dose slowly over time, and in reality, this is one of the best ways to get off of any drug a proper taper plan, and plenty of support. There are other herbal supplements out there that claim to provide extra energy and things like this, but the world of supplements is largely unregulated, so it can be a dangerous game and a slippery slope to just start taking supplements every day. Again, I would say that if you want to get off caffeine, your best bet and your best option is to simply taper your daily intake, or just quit cold turkey. If you do quit caffeine cold turkey, just be aware that it does carry some withdrawal symptoms. But the thing to remember is that withdrawal from caffeine is generally short-lived, and once you make it two or three days, you're pretty much going to be out of the woods and through the worst of it. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for listening to the show. And again, be sure and check out our website at www.addictionspodcast.com. Additionally, I would like to personally thank everyone who has been so generous in donating through our brand new PayPal donation service, which can also be found on our website. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash addictionspodcast for important updates to the show and much, much more. And if you'd like to get in contact with the Addictions Podcast, shoot us an email at theaddictionspodcast at gmail.com. And remember, never quit quitting. Smashed your only car You aren't what you are really You missed it by so damn far Your head feels like it's in a blender And you hate to see the dawn Your stomach says return to sender After the buzz is gone Sundays you prayed Uncle John You poisoned yourself last night Mary slapped your friend Tom You got in a hell of a fight Monday comes and it's back to work The week seems so damn long The weekend's past, you're still a jerk After the buzz is gone